The Mounted Coast R1 and R1R, a race model intended for ultra road racing distances that now comes in two variations. But why do they come in two variations and how do they differ? Back in June, I reviewed Mounticos S1 model, their trainer model. Now my relationship with Mounticos goes much further back into the winter when they originally reached out to me to cover their R1 model, their race model. But at the time, I wasn't interested in that shoe because I'm not an ultra road racer. I didn't think I had a lot to say about a race shoe intended for those types of distances. But after running in the S1, I was really intrigued by the brand because I really enjoyed that shoe. So as I was talking with the brand, they mentioned that they have a new version of the R1 coming out this year called the R1R, which essentially has the same outsole on it as the S1. And I was very interested in that because I wanted to compare them directly. By the way, that'll be the next video on the channel. But when they sent the R1R to me, they also sent the R1 to me. Now, my one of my main contacts at Mount Coast said that I needed to run in both to really understand them. And Lynn, you were totally right. So to produce this review, I've spent about 30 kilometers in the R1 model, the original model, and about 35 kilometers in the R1R model, which is the slight variation on top of that. And I have a very good sense of these two shoes. Now, obviously, these shoes in this video are provided by Mount Coast for the purposes of review, but they're not paying me to make this video, nor do they have any editorial control over the contents of this video. And with all that out of the way, let's jump into the R1 and the R1R. So what do we actually have here? Let's start with the specs of this shoe. We have 35 mm foam in the heel, 27 mm foam in the forefoot, giving you an 8 mil drop. Now the real feel of the drop in this shoe is somewhere between 6 to 8 mil. You definitely do feel the drop in this shoe. The R1 model, which this is, weighs 8.46 ounces or 240 grams. And the R1R model, which I'll talk about in a moment, weighs 9.03 ounces or 256 grams. There is a slight weight difference between the two variations of this model. And that's for the US Men's Size 9 reference size that everyone uses. Now, as you can see, the weights of the two pairs of these shoes that I have are very spot on to the spec, which really says something about the build quality of this shoe. They're exceptionally well-built shoes. And overall, the foam characteristics, the ride characteristics of this shoe are very airy to me. This is a super critical Peebo blended foam. It's the brand's proprietary midsole foam called Light Cell. And it does feel very airy to me. It has those qualities of a Peebo based foam. You don't get a ton of sink into this foam, but you do get some resiliency out of this foam, especially being a race model. Starting with the upper on this shoe, we have a dual layer jacquard mesh upper, but what's unique to this shoe and this brand's race model is that it's a dual zoned upper. We have a heel zone and a forefoot zone, and you can see the seam down the middle of the upper here. That's joined together by this eyelet chain, which the brand calls their tune fit dual lacing system. And what that means is that the upper part of the eyelet chain, the heel section of the shoe is a traditional lace, and the lower part of the eyelet chain, which is the forefoot section of the shoe, is what I would call a speed lace. Now that's the brand's engineering solution to give the runner options for how they want to lace this shoe. Now remember, this is a race shoe intended for ultra marathon distances. Those distances will be 10, 20, 30 hours on your feet at any given time, or 10, maybe 15, 20 hours even over multiple days in a stage race. So you're going to get some foot swelling on those types of runs. And this is designed and engineered to give the runner options how they want to lace this. If you have foot swelling in the front of your foot, in the forefoot area, you can get locked down in the heel section of the shoe and vice versa. And I think it works really well. It's a nice engineering solution here, and I think it does very well for this upper. Now, the toe box in this shoe is what I would call somewhat wide. This is not a wide shoe. But again, there's a lot of width and a lot of volume here to give your foot room to be able to expand, to be able to swell over these longer distances. There is a firm toe bumper in the shoe, which again, keeps the material off your toes. Someone who has very sensitive toes and toenails, I really like that, that feel. Now, the overall fit of the toe box in this shoe is, I would say, very generous. As I said, this is a wider shoe, but I would not call this a wide model. But if you have a wide foot, you may be able to make this one work, especially with the lacing options. In the ankle collar and the Achilles flare, we have a lot of padding, 
Uh, there is a pocket back here. It's not the deepest pocket back here, but it's enough to hold your heel down. We have a well padded tongue. And again, with this lacing system, I've had absolutely no issues with heel lift in this shoe. And overall, the lockdown has been very good and the shoe overall is very comfortable. Now this dual layer jacquard mesh is conforming to the foot, but not sock-like. Again, it keeps the material off of your foot where you want it, but it also holds your foot in where you need it. And I think it's just a really good, well-considered upper overall. Moving to the midsole of this shoe, this is where a few key technologies of Mount to Coast really come together to make a very unique feel underfoot. And the first is their light cell foam. That is their supercritical Piva blended foam that is the foam in this shoe. It's actually the foam in the S1, the R1. It's actually the foam in all of their current models. However, given this is the race model, this version of the foam is tuned a little bit softer. There's a little bit more resiliency, a little bit more energy return. But when you hear that, don't think of this as a super shoe like in the marathon racing world. This is a race model, but it's tuned very differently than what our marathon racers, our super shoes are. There is resiliency, there is energy return to this, but it's not over the top. It's not prioritizing that over everything else. This has a nice feel of uh, energy return, but it's also very supportive. And it's also a very airy ride. It feels very light on your foot. So again, over long distance, over long distance races, this is a wonderfully tuned foam that is giving you enough energy return, but it's giving you a ton of protection in a very lightweight package overall. And contained in this midsole is another very interesting technology from Mount to Coast that's unique to them, and they call that their zero sag element. And what that is, is a piece of urethane that essentially runs under the foot in the same place as this black piece on the outsole does, that runs from the toe off area across the ball of the foot into the midfoot. Now this is not a stability element, it's a piece of urethane. When you hear urethane, you think of say skateboard wheels or rollerblade wheels, something like that. It's the same material. Now urethane is not a cushioning technology, it's a shock absorption or damping technology. So what that's doing directly under the foot in this midsole is giving this light, airy, supercritical piba foam a little bit more density, more density than you would expect from a airy piba foam like this. Now, across a long distance, a long time on foot, a very light, supercritical peep of foam, you're going to pack that out. But this zero sag element that's directly under the ball of the foot and on the toe off area is not going to let that happen. So it allows you to have a very lightweight, very airy foam that has very nice feel underfoot, but it just feels denser than it really is. It's a really unique ride that makes this shoe feel like it rides with I don't know, a few more mil of foam underfoot, but without all the bulk, without all the extra weight. It works exceptionally well. And also in the R1 and the R1R models, there's also a zero sag element piece in the heel of the shoe. That's different than what's in the S1. So you feel the same support and same density in the heel, especially for heel strikers. So it works for a very smooth heel to toe transition that again, feels denser than it should for a shoe that's this lightweight. And lastly, the overall geometry of this midsole is something the brand calls their Go Flow geometry. Now, what that is, is this shoe looks like it's a very traditional geometry. It looks very similar to other shoes I talk a lot about on this channel that I really like. I like more traditional trainers. But I'm going to say this shoe is a very modern ride, and that's very much this Go Flow geometry. Now, there is a four foot rocker here, but it's not extreme. It's not like what we're seeing across a lot of other shoes. Uh, in the market, performance trainers, super shoes, all of that. But this shoe definitely gives you a very smooth, very seamless heel to toe or midfoot to toe or just toe feel. It's a very modern, very unique ride, which in combination with the very airy, super critical Piva blended foam and the zero sec technology directly under the forefoot and the heel in the shoe, just gives you a light, airy ride that just rides like there's a lot more foam under the foot, but again, you don't have the bulk and you don't have all the extra weight. And it's just a very smooth, very stable shoe that just keeps ticking you over um, foot strike after foot strike. It's a very, very subtle feel, but once you get used to it, you can see where it's really gonna work well for ultra long distances because it's not something that is aggressive on the toe. It doesn't feel like you're falling forward in this shoe at all, but it is propelling you forward. Again, 
Very subtle engineering in this shoe, but very well done, especially for the primary use case of ultra road racing in this shoe. And moving to the outsole of this shoe, on the R1 model, we have a CPU outsole material, which is a cast polyurethane material. Now that material has two key properties. It's very abrasion resistant, and it's very resistant to extreme temperatures. So a lot of ultra road racing distances are in hot environments. There's a few key races that are in deserts. So this is a material that's going to wear very well. It's very abrasion resistant, but it's also going to resist all those temperature extremes um, when asphalt temperatures are probably 50, 60 degrees Celsius. It's a really nice material. And on the R1R, we actually have a rubber material. And this is the difference between these two shoes. Otherwise, these are exactly the same shoe, but the outsole material is different. And on the R1R, this goes for the traditional rubber outsole. It's the same outsole that's on the S1, the trainer model. And this gives a very different feel underfoot and it gives runners a lot more options. And options, that's really the key word here. And that's really, to me, the difference between the R1 and the R1R is giving runners options. Now, let's talk about the ride of these two shoes. And that's really where they differ. Because as I said, they're identical shoes except for the outsole. So starting with the R1 model, this shoe, because of this CPU outsole, has a very soft, very compliant feel to the road. You get a lot of feel in this shoe. Now, if you've ever run in a rubberized foam outsole, like a classic Hoka, for example, you know that shoes that don't have rubber outsoles have very soft feels on the ground. And this shoe is no different, but because of this CPU material, you're getting all of that wear and abrasion resistance that you wouldn't get with a rubberized foam. So it's a very interesting ride because this shoe is a very soft, as I said, very compliant feel underfoot. You have a lot of feel. You have ground feel. You can actually understand how your foot's flexing and moving in the shoe. It's just a very airy, very soft, very nice feel-based shoe. Now moving to the ride of the R1R, remember it's exactly the same shoe. I'll talk about these laces in a moment, but the rubber outsole, which weighs about 16 or 20 grams to this shoe in the standard US reference size nine that everyone uses, um, makes this shoe ride a little stiffer. The shoe doesn't flex as much, you don't have as much feel in this. But what I would describe the R1R as is a much more protective feel. This shoe, feels more substantial underfoot. And I'm, I'm not just talking about the foam, the zero sag element in this shoe, just this outsole makes this shoe feel a little bit more traditional underfoot, but much more substantial than the R1R. So again, it's about giving runners options. Now, where I think these two shoes together give runners a ton of options is it allows an ultra runner to look at a course and really fine tune what they wanna feel. If you're on a section of road, you know that day stage or that first section to the first aid station is long, flat, good pavement. You're gonna probably pick up the pace. You're gonna make some time on that. And you wanna shoot with a lot of feel that feels very light, very fast, very agile, very airy. The R1 is gonna be the option for you because now because of this outsole, you have a very good package to accentuate what you want in that type of stage or section of a course. But say the next section or the next day stage is maybe more hilly. You're going to have uh, probably more mixed pavement. Maybe it's going to be wet. That's where the R1R is going to come in because you're going to have a much more substantial, more protective feel underfoot. And especially for long descents, this rubber outsole is really going to save your legs. I've found that through my testing in the shoe that this one descends really well, those long descends, I'm talking multi-kilometer descents, this rubber outsole just absorbs that, and especially if you're heel striking, the zero sag element in the heel plus the rubber outsole on the shoe really, really saves your legs. So again, these two shoes exist to really give runners options and options in a race environment, and I think it's exceptional. Now, as you see in my R1R model, I've swapped out the laces for just a traditional lacing system. And I did that because the rubber outsole on this shoe makes the shoe flex differently. It's not as soft and flexible as the R1 model. And I was having a little bit of an issue getting the right lockdown, especially in the lower part of the eyelet chain with the uh, tune fit dual zone system. It worked completely fine for me, but 
because I see these shoes as giving runners options, I wanted to see how this would feel. I wanted to give myself another option in the shoe. So I relaced the shoe with just a traditional lace. And I found that for this stiffer, slightly stiffer shoe, this traditional lacing system, I think, gave me a better fit. It gave me the feel that I really wanted in this shoe. And it allowed me to just have a much more protective feel underfoot. And I really, really like that. It really differentiated this shoe considerably from the base R1 model. So much so that I would love to see the brand moving forward include both laces in the box because again, you're just going to give runners more options for what they want to really tune the fit in this shoe. Because as soon as I changed these laces, this shoe just came alive for me and I really, really enjoyed it after that. Now, what if you aren't racing ultra road distances? What if you're just preparing for a half or a full marathon? Where does this shoe fit in? Well, like the S1, I think this becomes a very good long distance trainer. And especially the R1, I think it becomes a very soft, very compliant, very feel-based long distance trainer. This is a shoe that you're gonna be able to do all of your long runs in, preparing for your half or your full marathon, in a very lightweight, very airy package and a very nice foam for that. It's not tuned like a super shoe. It's not even like the plated performance trainers that we see on the market. It's tuned much less aggressively, much less uh, resiliency to the shoe, but still enough that you do notice it. So for a training environment, this shoe is gonna do exceptionally well. And I would think for any half and especially full marathon, racers that are preparing for that full marathon in that build and they're looking for a long run shoe the r1 or the r1r are going to be a great option for that overall i'm very very impressed with mount to coast they have some very unique engineering and they're implementing that in their products in very subtle ways and they're making exceptionally well-built shoes that are very purpose-driven for the ultra road racing distances that they're really focused on but for marathoners, half marathoners, or anyone looking for a long distance trainer, you're also gonna benefit from these ideas and this really good engineering. Now the brand has provided me a few links, which I'll put in the description to pick up your pair of R1s or S1s. The R1R will be releasing in the coming weeks in September of 2024. It's not currently out as a publication of this video, but it will be coming out. I'll put a link to that at some point when that link becomes available. Now these links are not affiliate links. I get nothing for clicking on them, but they just let the brand know where you came from that Saga Sue Running sent you. So thank you, Mount to Coast, for sending these shoes uh, to me. I've really enjoyed testing them and running in them, and I look forward to trying many, many more of your products. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you find this content useful, consider subscribing. You'll see more content from me pop up in your feed. If not, drop a like on this video because it helps this channel continue to grow, which I always appreciate. And with that, I'll catch you in the next one.